Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. What's up, everybody? This is the Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com. I'm Ryan Hoppy, And I'm Ryan Stuprich. And to get in contact with us, you can tweet at us in real time. I'm at Hoppy Radio 893. And I'm at Ryan Stuprich, S-T-U-P-R-I-C-H. And to call the show, if you want to get on air and you're not shy and you don't hide behind Twitter, it's 630-403-5200. That's 630-403-5200. All right, Ryan, who is on the phone line? From 670 The Score, we have Adam Hogue. Hey, Adam, what's up? What's up, guys? How's it going? Good. We are doing good. So um, what is your take on all the off-season moves made by the Bears this year? Well, I think it's hard not to like them. I mean, um, you know, Phil Emery, we heard from Jay Cutler even going back towards the, you know, I don't know if that was November or December, but Jay said that he knew Phil Emery had a plan and, and we sort of took that in regards to Jay's contract, but they executed all that very quickly, not only locking up Jay right away, but also getting uh, Matt Slauson locked up, Tim Jennings, Robbie Gold, too, who's making more money than any special teamer in the entire league now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think he's earned that contract. So starting with that, that was all good to start locking up the guys because this was a team that had, I forget what the number was, was somewhere around 30 uh, free agents that they were gonna, just on their own roster. Then they get to uh, March 11th, which is the start of the new league year, and uh, quickly add Lamar Houston, Willie Young, uh, and then the big signing with Jared Allen. They, they address their need of pass rushing very quickly, filled some holes, and I think what mainly what they've done here is they've given themselves a lot more flexibility with the upcoming NFL draft. They put themselves in a position where they instead of addressing certain positions, they definitely have more flexibility in terms of taking the best player available when their picks come up. And now, um, real quick, if Jay is healthy through the whole, the whole year, could you see this team making it to the playoffs finally? How does this go down? Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you look at last year, they were uh, you know, a, a one busted coverage away from, from winning the division and making the playoffs. However, yeah. you also do have to keep in mind that I don't know if it would have come down to a Week 17 matchup against the Packers if Aaron Rodgers hadn't gotten hurt. So um, I, I think they would have probably secured that division title earlier, uh, Green Bay, I mean. Um, however, I do think the Bears have closed that gap with the Packers. And uh, with this offense, you know, if you just – all 11 starters are coming back on this Bears offense, and that's always a good thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if you just take those 11 guys, no matter who they end up adding here – um, through the draft or whatever, it, it, those 11 guys should be better next year in year two under Mark Tressman. So you get that offense a year to evolve, and this was something Jay Cutler said going into last season, was that he really thought it was going to take his three years for, for this to really get going, and yet they were pretty good last year. Second highest scoring offense in the league, and, and Mark Tressman and Phil Emery both said they want to be number one. So that's going to continue to be better, and I think that that's why – um, you can definitely look at this team right now going into the draft. They still have time to add more guys, uh, and it looks like a possible playoff team right now. Long snapper for the Bears, Patrick Manley, is entering his 17th season. Uh, do you think that he'll be back with the Bears um, if they decide to, to hold on to him? Yeah, it, it's hard to say for sure because it, it's up to his body right now, and he's in San Diego rehabbing um, that hip that he had surgery on. And, and he said this week when we talked to him, uh, we, I think that was Tuesday when we talked to him, that he really just needs to test his body and see how it responds and, and leave it up to uh, his body. That being said, he also said his heart and his head are into it. He wants to come back. And I think chances are that uh, he will be able to return. I think that he sees all the moves that Phil Emery has made, all the additions, and he knows that this might be his best chance of winning the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And uh, if Mark Tressman could improve on one thing as a coach, uh, in your opinion, what would that be? Well, I think it's just making uh, critical game decisions Uh in the game. We saw last year 
um, some things that uh, I don't know if he totally, you know, he never actually said that that second down field goal in, in Minnesota was something he regretted. Right. Um, but I, I think those are the kind of situations. And we also saw some going for it on fourth down. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Uh, just things like that. He needs to get a little bit more comfortable. You know, I was reading, um, I read his book for a second time this off season. He was talking about when he first went to the Canadian Football League, how it really took him a long time to get used to those rules, specifically the clock. And and this is a guy who coached the NFL for a long time, so he knows the NFL rules. However, there was probably somewhat of an adjustment last season. So I think he'll get more comfortable, and, and that's hard for any coach. Um, to have to make those split-second decisions within a game. They can talk about scenarios all they want in their meetings during the week, but things change, and not everything gets talked about. So I think that that kind of stuff should be much smoother in year two. And now how hard is it for a coach to go from being a coach in the CFL to being a coach in the big National Football League? What's that like for a coach? Well, I don't – I mean, i got to yeah. be honest, I don't know too much about the, the CFL. Right. However – um, you know, other than the rule changes, I mean, you're just talking about a bigger stage. You're talking about more scrutiny, um, and just in general, it's it's the NFL. It's the best players on the field on every, every given week, and so um, you know, I, I I think that that's just for him. Like like I said, this guy's been in the NFL for a long time before he went to Canada. Uh, he had just never been a head coach before, so. You know, whether it's CFL, NFL, I think just that adjustment to being the guy in charge is big. He handled it very well in Canada and got that team um, to the Grey Cup in his first season there, second year they won it. And so um, you saw some improvement there, and, and he has talked about some of the adjustments he made between year one and year two when he was the head coach in Canada. I'm sure he's got things like that lined up with the Bears, and, and we'll find out what those things are, but I think that there's a, a, that's a good sign that there could be some improvement, um, not just with the team and how they play, but also with the head coach going into year two, which, by the way, I thought was a pretty solid year for a head coach, mm-hmm. uh, first year as a head coach in the NFL. I thought he did a pretty good job. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I also agree with that. I think he, uh, he really did a nice job, especially in his first year. Now, the... Uh, National Football League has made some new moves uh, that they passed, like making the uprights five more feet and uh, the and the clock uh, continuing to go after a sack. Uh, do you agree with some of these moves, and do you think that maybe the NFL should look into uh, doing some other things to improve the game? Well, I, I do definitely agree with the – well, both the ones you mentioned I agree with, but yes. I definitely agree with the goalposts, and I know they've had some issues with um, – uh, just actually getting that done to actually get the the taller goalpost, but I I think it's a smart move because there are times, and this happens in, in college football too, where uh, a, a kick goes just barely over the upright, and you sort of wonder if it was actually good or not. Right. Now that's almost impossible to review unless you have the a camera on the the referee's hat. That's right underneath because in that situation, the referee really does have the best view of whether the kick was good or not, better than any camera angle, and you sort of just have to trust um, that what he saw was true. So I, I definitely think extending the upright uh, to be even taller is good because that will eliminate that happening. Um, maybe it will still happen every once in a while, but it will reduce the amount of times that still happens. Um, and then, yeah, with the clock, you know – after a sack, you might as well just let it keep running. I certainly yeah. understand that. Um, you, I, NFL does a better job than college in terms of keeping the games shorter, uh, but but that should help as well. And now, um, who are some people that you think the Bears will go for in the upcoming draft? Well, I mean, I, I can't say who they have on their draft board. I know the guys that I like and um, sort of think are good fits for the Bears. If we're talking first round, uh, I definitely think the two biggest areas of need, I'd probably put safety first, mm-hmm. then defensive tackle, and then corner. Um, but I think that they've done enough at those positions that they could take the best available player at that spot between those three positions. Um, and maybe you would even consider a middle linebacker there. Some of the guys I like, I, I like Aaron Donald. I think he's a great motor. He's a little undersized. Yes. Um, I, I understand concerns about him because a lot, most of the time guys that side don't work out in the NFL. 
However, when you watch his tape, he's very productive, um, and I think he would be a big boost to the Bears' as three technique. Um, with the safeties, I'm starting to like Calvin Pryor from Louisville a little bit more than Ha Ha Clinton Dix from Alabama. The more yeah. tape I've watched of him, um, I think he's built a little bit better. I think he'll be more durable. I also think that, that he can jam better if they put him in some man coverage at the line of scrimmage. Uh, he projects probably more as a strong safety, but I think he can develop the skills to play free safety as well, whereas Ha Ha Clinton Dix is more of a center fielder. All three of those guys, though, I think would be great in the first round for the Bears. Now, before we let you go, where can people find your work online and on the radio? Yeah, uh, 670 com. Got plenty of good content, especially mm-hmm. with the draft right now. Um, I'm unva- uh, unveiling the top 20 guys that I like for the Bears that could be available for them. Cool. Uh, we've also been doing some podcasts leading up to the draft. And then, um, you know, I'm on the score. No set times, but right. weekends, some shows as a guest all the time, so listen to the score, too. Thanks for coming on the show, Adam. We'd love to have you on again right when the draft's about to come on. No problem, guys. Thanks, Adam. Thanks. And that was Adam Hogue of 670 The Scores. He came on to Friday Sports Riot on the Illinois Center for Broadcasting Hotline. Talk about the Bears. Pretty yep. good segment, Ryan. Yeah, I thought so. All right, we're going to come back, catch up on break. Yes. We will be right back. Hang on. Friday Sports Riot on SportstownChicago.com.